Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Are you ready to get out of your house and back into the world? Well, we are back in beautiful Belize, and the question is, will Belize bounce back? And where's the real estate opportunity? There was a lot to love before. What's the story now? We'll find out today, and we've got a great guest on the Real Estate Guys radio program. In uncertain times like this, it's great to know there are two things you can always count on. High demand for affordable single-family homes to live in and Terry Kerr's amazing Memphis team at Mid-South Home Buyers to find, fix, and manage the next addition to your recession-resistant real estate portfolio. The Memphis market is logistics and distribution dynamo with an economic engine that's essential to moving goods and critical supplies all over the United States quality rehab, proven profitable property management, affordable rents, and solid ROI make turnkey property investing through Terry's team a dream when it matters most. To learn more about Memphis and Mid-South Home Buyers, send an email to midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. That's midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, it is our financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. What's not usual is his attire. He's in shorts and flip-flops because we are back in beautiful Belize. It's a place we have uh, come to love and enjoy. And a funny thing happened back in March. They shut down the border and we haven't been able to come visit. And uh, now that's all changed. And so... Will Belize bounce back? What's happening? That's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, we've been coming to Belize for the better part of 15 years. And it you know, started just understanding when we were looking at the last almost financial crisis, we were you know, on the front end of it. And we start hearing people talk about the concept of having a plan B, which is now a big part of our thinking and a lot more prevalent out there in the world as far as people who are thinking about their wealth and preparing for an uncertain future. Uh, so 15 years ago, we were thinking that way. And we looked and said, well, what do we love to do? Uh, where do we like to go? How long do we want it to take for us to get there? What kind of an environment do we want to be in? There was a lot of things to think about. And we had friends, of course, because we're us and connected even back then. We had people all over the world. You know, Robert, you were flying back and forth to Australia. I was like, eh, I'm, not, I'm not about that. We did that one trip to Paris to interview Ivana Trump. And uh, man, it was just like going from the West Coast of the United States through New York, across the Atlantic into Paris. Uh, that was a long haul. And I, and when you said, Hey, let's go down to Australia. I said, oh, why don't you go and tell me how it is? You know? <laughs> and so I didn't, I'm not as adventurous as you are, but Belize for me is really closer than going to Hawaii. It's an easier flight. It's an easier trip to make. And, you know, my dad's Filipino and I kind of always grew up liking that kind of white sand beachy type thing. I don't know, maybe it's in my DNA, but I remember the first time I got off the plane in, in San Pedro. <laughs> that's before they had even built the airport. It was just like this little, right? Nothing. It was, and I'd like, I was taking <laughs> pictures and you know, on the little puddle jumper and all that. And I came out, but I fell in love immediately. I, I just loved it. And then when I got to know the people even better. So lots of things to like about Belize. Yeah. And I don't think any of that has changed. I mean, we came here when it was in a very different time and place. It was before the last recession. Things were strong here and yet it was undeveloped. And you could see there was excitement. You could see there was promise, but it wasn't obvious. And today it's pretty obvious. Fast forward 15 years and many of the things we were saying, one day this might happen, have pretty much all happened. And it's been interesting to watch. I remember when we first started coming to Belize, the most popular shirt in the t-shirt stand was, where the hell is Belize? And today we don't even sell that shirt in Belize because it's been a very vibrant market. It's been on the top of a lot of international lists. It has made the travel industry and the hotel industry and the tourism industry rounds. And it's, it's something. It is a laid back place. It's beautiful. And what's great about the country is it's a variety of terrain and people and experiences. There's jungles and rainforests. There's unbelievably sparsely populated areas where you don't see another human being for hours, if not 
days. Then there are the laid back beach towns. There's the beautiful reefs and the palm trees and the Corona commercial white sand. And at the same time, there's tons of agriculture and business. People think of Belize as a place to go on vacation and it certainly is that, but it's not the primary driver. Belize is self-sustaining. It feeds itself. It uh, has an export of five and a half times the amount of petroleum that it uses. And yet there's no offshore drilling or any of that kind of stuff. So it's a fascinating place, but it's small. You know, I remember the first time we had a chance to meet the prime minister and get our picture taken. And it's like, wow, that's, that's the prime minister. It's like the president. Well, it's actually more like the mayor of Anaheim, California. Right, because the place is just not that big. And yet it is pretty magical. And it's funny because in a way we look kind of smart that we got involved in Belize real estate 15 years ago. I don't know that it was smart. We certainly did some research. We went to a lot of other Caribbean countries, a lot of other Central American countries looking for another market. And we ended up here for all the reasons. You know, it's English speaking. It's close to the U.S. All the contracts because of that are in English. It's a two to one currency valuation, two Belize dollars, the same as one U.S. dollar. And everybody takes every currency. And yet all the real estate, and all the hotel rates are in US dollars. So it's very friendly to foreigners. It's fee simple ownership. It's not the trusts that some countries use and require. It's simple. There's no big major brands except real estate offices and now hotels. Russ, our first trip, there were no branded hotels of any kind in Ambergris Key, the number one tourist market. Today, there are several. So we've really seen this market blossom. Well, I think I think that what we had was we had the Biff Almanac. I mean, that's what we had. You know, we were doing development in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and I'd been to Hawaii. You'd been to Hawaii. We. When you've gone to Hawaii and you can see what Hawaii is, it, and you're a real estate guy, you think, gosh, it sure would have been good to be here 50 years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then you go to Cabo San Lucas and you know you get into the little bit of the history of the market and you realize where that was 20, 30 years ago. And then you get off the plane and step into Belize. You don't have to have a lot of imagination. You know, it's just like the people from Silicon Valley that go into Las Vegas, you know, to kind of throw the dice around a little bit and go out and look at real estate and go, oh my God, I can get a 4,000 square foot house for $250,000. Are you kidding me? Right. I mean, why wouldn't I buy 10 of those, right? You have to do a little bit more market research. But my point is, is that it isn't hard for you to imagine when you have lived in a 2,500 square foot house on a quarter acre lot that costs a million dollars. And today they're two and a half million dollars, but but a million dollars. And you walk in and look at a house that's twice as big that costs half as much. It is you don't have to stretch your brain cells to go, you know, in the right situation, somebody might be willing to pay a million or two million dollars for this property. So you see that opportunity. We walked into to Belize and we said, man, this is just virgin. This is there's so much opportunity here. Now, will it happen? Are the drivers there? You know, were the drivers there in Las Vegas to sustain? Well, no. I mean, Las Vegas, right after we did that trip and to Las Vegas and we saw that, it went up 50%, right? A lot of people, and I'm not saying we did that, we didn't do that, but a lot of people saw that opportunity and they were speculating, but they didn't do their homework. I think the difference with us is, yeah, we're bouncing around, but we had the almanac and so we kind of knew what the future would look like under the right circumstances. And so the question is, as we dug in, do the right circumstances exist? Well, not everywhere in Belize, not carte blanche. There's big projects in the South and beautiful. The problem is to make real estate really work, you have to have supply and demand and critical infrastructure. And there was only one submarket in Belize that really did that well, that was not expandable to a substantial degree, but already had a degree of critical mass and yet still had enough room to expand. And it's like, okay, can you imagine being like on Manhattan Island before it got crowded? right? Or being in San Francisco Bay Area before they developed everything that could be developed, knowing there was no way to add more land down the road. That's what we saw in this submarket. That's what we got excited about. And I'm going to take more credit than you, Robert. I do think we were smart. We were smart enough to trust our gut. We were smart enough to do our homework. And then we were smart enough to take action on what we saw before anybody else saw it. And I think that ended up being a good call. So when's the best time to buy in Belize? Well, clearly it was 20 years ago. And the second best time might be today. This is my 158th trip in 15 years. And it's the longest I've gone not being here since my first trip because guess what? The world shut down. So today we're gonna find out 
What's up with Belize? Things are open. Will it bounce back? What's the direction? And we've got a great local guest. Stay with us today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Hear ye, hear ye. Registration is now open for the Real Estate Guys 19th Annual Investor Summit. Imagine spending an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals. Returning this year, our sales legend Tom Hopkins, the editor of the Gold Newsletter Brian London, international real estate developer Beth Clifford, and Jim Rohn's 18-year business partner Kyle Wilson. And joining us live and in person for his 9th Investor Summit, Peter Schiff. Plus, returning for his ninth Investor Summit, best-selling author and the Rich Dad Advisor for Real Estate, Ken McElroy. Plus, lots more to be announced. It all begins June 11th in beautiful Belize. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to reserve your spot. This transformational week is like no conference you've ever attended. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click Summit and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys, Peter Schiff, Ken McElroy, and an all-star faculty on the 19th Annual Investor Summit. Are you an accredited investor looking for reliable cash flow with some additional upside? You probably realize that energy drives all economic activity. The COVID-19 global slowdown created a temporary crash in oil prices, which in turn opened up a tremendous but little known opportunity. This unique situation has allowed a seasoned team of oil professionals to craft a compelling structure that locks in profit when oil prices are low, while capturing significant upside when prices increase. And this offering leverages proven oil production, not risky exploration. Sound intriguing? Then your first investment should be the 20 minutes it takes to watch a short video that will detail this high yield passive income opportunity. Simply send your email request to blueridge at realestateguysradio.com. If you're an accredited investor looking for predictable yield with sizable upside, email blueridge at realestateguysradio.com. That's blueridge at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Kevin Harrington, an original shark from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. And we are back in beautiful Belize. Let's say hello to our good friend, Mr. David Kafka. Hey, David. Hey, Robert. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm happy to be back. I left uh, Belize back in February and expected to be back near the end of March. And then nobody was let in near the end of March. It's been closed down. And uh, for many of those months, you were here. And tell us about going from the most vibrant tourist market in the country to complete shutdown. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I have video that I took on Front Street, Middle Street, Back Street where not a golf cart, not a person in sight. Wow. There's, you know, by the airport, you always see rows of golf carts, nothing for days and days and days. So it was uh, definitely an experience, you know, lines at, at the stores, you know, took me like an hour to get meat one day at Lino's Meat Shop in town. Um, grocery stores, kind of the same, but it looks like it's a uh, kind of nearing its 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 end. Well, I see that tourism has started up. The airport's open. You've got several of the bigger hotels open. Um, let's talk about this gold standard thing, because this is a thing that the Belize Tourism Board came up with to make sure that guests were safe returning. Uh, what does that look like? Yeah, so it's, it's basically a training module and how we need to clean, how we need to kind of just adapt, you know, with what's going on. Uh, some things have changed, like daily housekeeping and things like that. You have to ask for it. You know, it's not going to be every day. People are not going to take your luggage to the room unless you specifically ask for it. You know, it, it's a lot less contact, uh, more cleaning, um, and it's more of a visible cleaning as well, where you can see, you know, things are on the wall, what, you know, when people cleaned at what time, what type of products to use for cleaning, for disinfecting, how long it has to wait, and, and things like that. And it, it's not just for the hotels, it's for tour guides have to be a gold standard. Uh, some of the, the, the taxi drivers, 
and even our art shop we have to have a gold standard for our art shop well i think long run that's probably good stuff right people are learning things they didn't know about how germs travel and that's all over the world but i think the belize people have always been very resilient and uh they've been ready to to be open that's for sure it's been fun to see little by little the you know announcements of different hotels that are starting up some of the expectation of uh what we call high season is you know the coming months so we're here in December. You've got the holiday season, which is peak season in uh, Ambergris Key for sure. And then the, the first months, but all of that has slowed way down. What's it looking like for, you know, guests coming in the new year? Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been awesome. And in, in, in Ambergris Key and San Pedro uh, specifically, uh, we're starting to see tourists around. Granted, you only see half their face now because uh, <laughs> we do have a mandatory mask wearing. You don't have to wear it if you're exercising or in a car with, with your own group. Um, you do have to wear it in a golf cart, a motorcycle, you know, whatever. Uh, we're still seeing some things closed, like nightclubs um, are not open, but pretty much everything's open. Um, and we're just trying to do the social distancing and be respectful of our neighbors, wear our mask when we're going to our table. And once you get to your table, you can take your mask off and things like that. You know, it's just kind of just like what's going on in, in many other parts of the world. Well, let's talk about how COVID affected Belize. Early on, the numbers were extremely low and the population here is under 400,000. So it's not a big place anyway, uh, but numbers were really low and then kind of out of hand. Take us through the experience in Belize with uh, the coronavirus. Yeah, uh, I hate to generalize, but a lot of the COVID cases have people been running over the border to grab stuff going to Mexico, going to Guatemala, grabbing things to buy and to sell. And so we're seeing a lot of pockets, hot spots, if you will, in, in certain areas, you know, small villages near the borders. And, and there are some exceptions, you know, like Belize City has quite a few cases right now. Um, the country, as of a couple days ago, December 7th, uh, we have 4,010 active cases. Um, there was 7,953 total. Our deaths have spiked up. We have about 176 deaths uh, with the majority of everything in the Belize district, Orange Walk, Cayo, Corozal, Stan Creek, and then Toledo, you know, kind of in order of uh, a number of cases. Out here on the island, it is a smaller population. Uh, everyone lives and works outside. So it's not surprising the numbers are lower here. But at the same time, uh, the government and business owners are being careful. So not having been here for a few months, you come back and there's plexiglass up and everyone's wearing the masks and everyone's happy to be back to work though. And I think, you know, as real estate investors, this is a market we've been involved with for a long time time been very excited about it back in january and february the numbers were unbelievable we were setting all kinds of records and then boom it all stopped so talk about that closure time people couldn't come here you couldn't show real estate but did you find people interested in real estate yeah i mean everybody was at home you know and everybody was on the internet so we we kind of ramped up. We started picking up and spending more money on advertising and, and our leads were coming in. We were selling property um, sight unseen. Um, the more higher end properties, we were selling with a contract with contingent on inspection when they could come into the country. Okay. Um, so we're starting to see those um, sales, you know, starting to go through the process of closure. But uh, yeah, we've, we've really had a lot. I mean, just Last month, we had probably, I want to say 300 leads, over wow. 300 leads just in my Remax office. Yeah. And majority of that is, is uh, I think 151 was from Realtor.com. So we're definitely seeing the interest. Home sales have spiked, um, as, you, as you know. Um, I think it's in the 30% range. Yeah, it's been crazy. You know, one of the things that we've noticed during uh, COVID is that people's interest in second homes has increased a ton. People's interest in planting a flag offshore has increased a lot. And for various reasons, right? Some people are sick and tired of politics. Some people want to be away from big groups of people. So they're looking for more sparsely populated places like this one. Uh, and yet there's a lot of reasons. At the same time, you have people, I think, this is my speculation, that are in that age, right? We've got the baby boomers who there's 10,000 of them retiring a day in the United States. And... 
COVID might have sped up their search for a place. They're thinking, you know, ah, five years, 10 years, I'll go find my, my piece of paradise. All of a sudden, this has been kind of a wake-up call, and we've seen a lot of those people raise their hand and say they're interested. Yeah, and, and also people that have been here, but it's kind of in the future. But because of COVID and with what's going on in, I mean, I hate to say it, but in the U.S. with politics and the riots and things like that, it's speeding up their process. And people are just ready to um, just jump. You know, and that's what we're seeing. Well, hey, speaking of politics and change, uh, there's just been an election here in Belize, and it's kind of a two-party system here. It's a parliamentary system. It's different than the U.S., but essentially there's a more conservative party and a more liberal party, and uh, they certainly aren't as diametrically opposed as, say, in the United States, but there's just been uh, an election, and the previous prime minister was not running for re-election. So what light can you shed on uh, the, the election and the, now that it's over and what's happening? Yeah, the honor. Dean Barrow is uh, stepped down. Um, he didn't re, you know, run again. Um, so he's now back in his law office and uh, continuing, you know, the practice of law. And uh, a businessman, I believe, a politician from uh, Orange Walk District is now the new prime minister. Yeah, and this has been interesting to watch because the way it works in Belize is a little bit different, but the prime minister can give notice for an election and the politicking and all the campaigning all happens in a very short period of time and then boom it's decided so this is a shift though this is the other party coming into power so i imagine you're seeing ministers change and some of those kinds of things what do you see coming down the road there correct um yeah ministers are changing and it was funny you know all of a sudden within a few weeks we saw signs everywhere but then after the election all the signs came down Love so that. it's been pretty cool watching that. So we are seeing a lot of uh, ministers, uh, new people getting elected, and they have a plan. We've been damaged from tourism, but we also realized how resilient the country is. You know, we were on full lockdown. We could have cargo ships and cargo, you know, vehicles come in um, with a process. And we were able, we didn't run out of food. We didn't run out of anything. Um, the country stepped up. A lot of people were donating, doing food drives, and it was just great to see everybody coming together. And like you said earlier, everybody is happy to be back at work. Seeing the tourists come back has been really cool. Well, tourism is less than 30% of the GDP of the whole country, but it is the primary driver here in the islands and in many of the resort areas, obviously. And those jobs are career jobs. So, you know, some people live in a place where they're going to be a waiter or a waitress. That's a temporary job here. That's a vocation uh, and you can earn good money that way. And people do. And yet when those jobs went away, it's tough on families. It's tough everywhere. You know, there was some stimulus in the United States and some other countries here. They had a little bit of that. Some of the locals were able to, you know, get some money to survive. But I think the interesting thing about Belize from my perspective is that because people in this country in general have been fairly poor, they don't have any trouble being poor. And I don't mean poor like a state of mind. I just mean when they're between jobs and they have to stretch their money and they can rely on each other. And it's been really good to see that part. But at the same time, this is probably the friendliest. Blazons are friendly people. It's probably the friendliest my trip in this time on the air. Everybody's happy to see us. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's one of the things that attracted me to Belize when I moved here, you know, almost 11 years ago and came here 15 years ago was the people. And I think... The hardest part for the Belizeans was the separation because they like talking to people. They like getting together. Families get together and everybody goes out together and, and things like that. And, and we couldn't do that. You know, you can't gather more than, you know, it was less than 10 at some point. Um, so it, it, it's all starting to get back. I mean, we're seeing a spike because people are, you know, just kind of forgetting the social distancing part. But it is still everybody's happy. You can definitely feel the vibe we're talking with david kafka we're in ambergris key belize we've got lots more to discuss find out where the market is going and we'll play real estate trivia next you're tuned to the real estate guys radio program i'm your host robert elms real estate investment advice right in your mailbox sign up for the free real estate guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get all you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable, but how? 
The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2021 Goals Retreat, January 8th to 10th, now in Dallas, Texas. This unique weekend event has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the live in-person 2021 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Hi, this is Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Have fun. You'll learn something. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program coming to you from Belize this week. Hey, right around the corner, it is our annual goals retreat. It's called Create Your Future. It's a chance for you to figure out where you're going, especially in light of this crazy COVID world. In reality, you can have an unbelievable amount of success in all areas of your life. Learn more by going to the website at realestateguysradio.com under events where you'll see Create Your Future. Well, it sounds like Belize is bouncing back. We'll find out more as we continue that discussion with David Kafka. But first, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia. That's your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question, which, of course, will have something to do with Belize. When you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. You'll need to include your name, the answer to the question, and your physical mailing address, the first person who gets it correct is going to win an awesome book called Don't Quit, Stories of Persistence, Courage, and Faith. That can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week on the show, we were talking about higher profits with Bill Durant single family homes. And we asked this, which state saw the most residents leaving in 2019? Yeah, people are constantly entering and leaving markets. Which state had the most residents leave last year? Well, the answer is the state of New York. According to a study by Atlas Van Lines released in January of this year, New York saw the biggest exodus, followed by West Virginia and South Dakota. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Which famous filmmaker owns three resorts in Belize? Yeah, it's a name you would know, and this filmmaker started here in the 1980s and today has three exquisite resorts. Who are we talking about? If you know or just want to guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. That's trivia at realestateguysradio.com. First person that gets the right answer is going to get an awesome book. It's called Don't Quit, Stories of Persistence, Courage, and Faith. That's today's real estate trivia question. One of the many fine authors in that book is our guest today, David Kafka. You actually tell your story of uh, finding paradise, coming to Belize, figuring all that out. And David, you and your brokerage and your agents help people who either want to relocate and move here, but also investors that are thinking, hey, maybe this is an opportunity. And I would imagine with the change uh, that we've seen worldwide, you probably have both of those people interested in real estate here. Yeah, we're we're seeing a lot of, of both particularly the, the second home market. I have a, an investment company as a, as a syndicator. Um, so we are seeing the interest there pick up. Um, we're 
currently doing a lot of outreach education, you know, like your motto, education for effective action. I've kind of adopted that as, as you know, as you're my, my mentor. We've definitely are putting out as much content as we can, um, asking people to ask whatever questions. I mean, this week on my, my webinar, I got stumped a couple times. So I'm having to, you know, figure out some answers. I'll find that out and I'll give it to the investors when I talk to them next month. Well, I've been on your list for a while. You put a bunch, a bunch of great stuff out there. In fact, uh, David's got a report he's going to make available to folks that's really interesting. It's not necessarily about investing or any of that. It's uh, the cost of living in Belize. One of the big questions people have is, well, if, I, if I'm going to move to Belize, if I'm going to spend three months a, a year in Belize, is it going to be more expensive, less expensive? Talk about what's in the report. Yeah. And it, it kind of compares to what, as Russ says, you know, it kind of depends where you're coming from. Right. There's some places it's going to be a lot cheaper and there's going to be some places where it's going to be more expensive. Um, so the report goes through pretty much everything that I have experienced. I got food prices from different districts. I have rental prices from different districts for different types of houses, apartments, insurance for your health, for uh, your cars, uh, medical insurance, what a doctor visit cost. Um, just pretty much it covers everything, utilities, everything what people ask me. I put it in this report, you know, got some pretty pictures of Belize and around Belize. And uh, I'd love to give it to the listeners. Awesome. Well, stay tuned and we'll tell you how you can get that. I just think it's fascinating and it's one of the questions that people ask. You know, you come down and you're a tourist and you're eating at the nicer restaurants and you're spending money. But uh, boy, I've learned that uh, there are some real keys to living uh, like a local. Uh, and you touch on some of that uh, in the report. Well, let's talk about the upside because this is a market that we're all very excited about. We come on a Belize discovery trip at least a couple times a year, usually part of those trips trips and we hit you know a bunch of people down here excited about the market and all of a sudden the whole thing goes on pause uh, we're about to come back and do another trip so uh, mark your calendars on the 29th of january is our next belize discovery trip we'd love to have you join us but it's going to be different because uh, not all the hotels have opened not all the restaurants have opened and it's kind of this opportunity where that hot overheated crazy market took a chill pill for a little bit. So where do you see opportunity moving forward? The opportunity is still there. I mean, we are seeing houses, you know, people are accepting offers that are 25,000 to, I mean, we've had one that was a hundred thousand under asking price. Wow. They're not like what you would call distressed. It's just things have come up and they're ready to move. Um, so we we're definitely seeing a lot of activity it's not a, you know, like in 2008, we didn't see a decline in the market. We're not going to see a decline now. There may be some some instances that are coming up that people have personal circumstances that will have them need to sell, uh, but we're not seeing it now. So there's a lot of opportunity, um, especially with, you know, some of the resorts that the occupancy is starting to go up at a lot of the resorts. So it's going to be a while before it gets back to where it was. But the signs are definitely in Belize's favor. You know, one of the things you brought up was, you know, just the 2008 market. It was really interesting. Uh, we started coming to Belize back in 2004 and five, and it was a strong market, had been a strong market. And then all of a sudden, boom, we have the depression in the U.S. and 2008, everything goes haywire. And in 2009... Belize sold more real estate than any other year. So in many ways, and it takes a little while to get your brain around this, but it's a contrarian market. Things were good in terms of tourism and those numbers. And so real estate was good. Then all of a sudden, less people are coming on vacation. People are concerned about the performance of all of their assets. And you would have thought, well, then no one's going to be buying here. Exactly the opposite happened. People came saying, my 401k is a 201k. I don't want that to happen again. And one of the things about this market is it's primarily a cash market. There's not a lot of financing here. And at first, people are put off by that. Like, well, if I can't finance it, I can't get leverage. Yeah, but the other thing that happens is without leverage, there's no foreclosures. There's no distress. This market never feels like it's turning in the wrong direction. And so how do you counsel people who are faced with the reality that they're not going to likely get a bank loan? Yeah, it's. I think we've given out or it's it's on the, on the website uh, how to buy property with leverage. Majority of it's seller financing. You know, talk to a couple people this week and, and they expect to come here with, you know, 10, 20% down and, and that's just not going to happen. Right. 
Um, so we just have to educate. Everything's about education and um, it doesn't affect people. They want to come here. They want to buy. So they're going to find the money. And it's also stable because of that. You know, leverage is great. We love leverage as real estate investors, but it is a two-edged sword. Anyone that went through the downturn in 2007, 8, 9, you know, saw that and maybe were personally affected. One of the things that saved our bacon, if you will, back then is that we own property free and clear in many places, including this one, and we're better for it, not worse for it. So it is a little bit contrarian. I would expect that 2021 is going to be a pretty strong year here here because we're seeing kind of this echo from 2009. Uh, but you talked about occupancy and it brings up something else. When I first started coming to Belize and when you first moved down here, there were no branded hotels. This island of Ambergris Key was all boutique hotels. Average hotel, about 18 to 22 rooms. You've got a little four bedroom bed and breakfast. The biggest hotels are 80, 90 rooms. Well, all of a sudden, that is all changed. There are now multiple hotel brands. So the first was a Hilton, then a Marriott, then Wyndham, now another Marriott. All these properties are under construction. One is open, but it's a big change, the shift, and that does create opportunities. So before we talk about you know what someone might invest in regarding that, let's talk about the change that you've seen with brands coming in and what does that mean to tourism and everything else? Yeah, I, I think, you know, like the Hilton, Hilton. People will come here now because there's a Hilton, because they can use their points. They're traveling all the time for work. They have all these miles or all these points with the Hilton, and now they can use them here. Same thing with the Bon Voyage, with the Marriott. You know, So it's going to bring us a, a new set of people that would not have come otherwise. Yeah, it's interesting. And we looked at this market early on and thought it doesn't really need a brand because it's doing great. These little boutique markets are cool. All these little hotels are funky and fun. And it's that kind of a place. It is definitely not uh, homogeneous, if you will. It is really cool and quirky and amazing. But now what the brands are doing is recognizing the demand for tourism. But it's also interesting that they bring a whole new level of employee interaction and training and those kinds of things and you're seeing you know uniforms and name tags and just kind of the professionalism that brings it up and when we study that in the market that usually has a direct effect on both occupancy and the rate you can charge yes for sure and you know the, the hilton is is getting rates that they wouldn't be able to otherwise without the hilton name um, so what that translate to investors is a better market or a better return on their investment. And of course, there's investments around that too. It's not just the residential or even the hospitality. There's commercial opportunity. I was surprised to see a brand new pizza parlor in town that wasn't here when I was here last time. It's like, well, that's not a great time to open a business. But at the same time, you've opened a business recently. Yep. Um, talk about that part of it, the entrepreneurial spirit in Belize. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, there's a lot of people coming here to start businesses and they'll work them and then sell them. We talk about that on, on the field trip, you know, like an, an incubation period. During the shutdown, some landlords didn't work with their tenants. And so we saw places move, but then we saw them open up somewhere else. Or, you know, so we'll see some things changing around, but uh, the landlords that worked with us, you know, because we were closed for eight, nine months as well. Our landlord worked with us. And so it, uh, you know, we're able to open up today and I expect it to be good again. Yeah. Well, and it's going to take time, right? Because it has been such a change. The last time we went through a downturn in uh, the U.S., right? It was all based on uh, the mortgages and, and that whole derivative. And we've talked about that ad nauseum. Uh, this is different, right? With the pandemic and people coming out of it, still uncertainty. It is great to see these brands also kind of professionally lead that because the gold standard is great for everybody, but you know that Marriott and Wyndham and Hilton all have very stringent cleanliness standards and are taking COVID-19 seriously. Yeah, and they're showing it and they're kind of doing it a little bit above and beyond the gold standard. So they want to make sure that, hey, your clients 
we're going to be safe. I think long term, that's going to be great. Some of those practices are, are going to change. Nobody knows how long people are going to be, you know, wearing masks and socially distancing. But going through that protocol and figuring the way around, people are unbelievably resilient. They figure it out. And no disrespect to anybody, whether you are someone that is not ready to get out and travel, got it, right? If you're someone who's like itching to get out and travel, this was my first time into the airport since uh, the country opened back up and it was very different. You had to come or they suggested you come with a PCR test. There were eight places I had to stop and it took me about an hour and a half to get through the airport, which normally I get through in about 20 minutes and you just have to have some grace for that. But it's been great watching the early adapters. So the folks that we're seeing on island right now are ready to be here. I was walking by and the uh, taxi pulls up and these two girls girls get out and the one yells we're here <laughs> and i'm like that sums it up right people are are ready some people and then the rest is going to be kind of a you know a slow evolution now in this market last time we talked we saw several new projects coming out of the ground so there was big demand that uh, always means that folks are going to figure out a way to come in and create supply so we see supply but many of those projects partially due to the virus and partially due to the fact that the airport is, was closed and materials are hard to ship and all that, um, have now slowed down, not stopped, but uh, slowed down. How do you see that impacting the market? Yeah, it was tough. And then we had two uh, hurricanes. We saw a lot of rain, not a lot of damage or hardly any damage. We got the edge of the hurricanes right. here in Belize, right. but it was rainy for right. days and days. Right. And, and unless you were in a low-lying area, you were fine. But it, it did slow down. And um, there was a couple uh, construction sites that, you know, the employees got COVID. But during the, the special times, you know, when the government shut down everything, um, everything had to stop, even construction. Then it started back and then they had to shut it down again. So it's starting to open back up now. Um, the developers are starting to, you know, open, but they're definitely being pushed back. You know, so if they were, I think the Marriott was going to open the end of uh, this year, like right around now. It's being pushed out to probably the end of first quarter um, or beginning the second quarter of, of next year. Yeah, and that's just the reality of it. That's happening everywhere. You moved here more than a decade ago, and you've seen changes, but you're enthusiastic. You're excited. Tell us what you see in the market and why you're so involved uh, in what's happening in the coming years. Yeah, I just, I just love Belize. I love the people. I think there's a lot of people like myself. And just everything I'm hearing from people, we're going to get back to the double digit, you know, numbers and tourism, and we're going to deliver these great experiences to people. There's just going to be a lot that people can do and people want to get out. And it's so close to the U.S. Everybody's talking, let's go to Belize. Everybody knows where Belize is now. It is close by. There's lots of flights and different airlines that are back. And one of the neat things about this market is we spend most of our time here out of doors, right? Most of the units that you would rent have patios or big balconies or decks. You're out in the sunshine, you're swimming, you're snorkeling, you're fishing. And so there's not a lot of people living on top of each other anyway. You know, there's the joke about people in towns don't want to touch the same elevator buttons. There's only a handful of elevators in this whole country, right? So we don't have those same kinds of things to worry about, but it is encouraging to see the Belizean people get back to work, which they've uh, needed for sure. We're going to do our discovery trip, which we've been doing for 15 years to Belize, and it's coming up January 29th to February 1st. So you can get the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com under events. Uh, David will be there. You get to pick his brain. Uh, if you're interested in David's report about the cost of living in Belize, we'll tell you how you can get that. That'll also get you his contact information in case you have any specific questions. So let's talk a minute about the trip. This is a way to learn a whole bunch of stuff in a really short period of time. Yeah. I know a lot about Belize, but when I was on it with you for the first time, I learned so much more. So you know the country very well. I know it pretty well. So I think we can help collapse some time frames for people. You get to learn a lot. And you get to see a lot and get to meet a lot of great people and experience Belize. You know, we go to different places to eat. There's one thing that I love about this country is the food. Oh, my gosh. The food is so good here. It's all organic. There is no GMO allowed in the country. And everything is fresh and fabulous. You know, I thought about Belize when you were sharing with me during the closed months that you had to wait in line. And sometimes there wasn't everything you need. And I went to the store yesterday. And it's 
back stocked really well. And it's like, wow, it's good to see those stress points. You know, if I was thinking about relocating here or eventually retiring here, I'd want to know how those things fared. I mean, we're on an island. It's a big island. It's 24 miles long, but everything gets shipped out here. And what happens when there's a big change? So to watch that happen and the resilience of the people has been great. Uh, we'd love to show you Belize. You've got two opportunities to hang out in Belize with the real estate guys. We're going to do our discovery trip in January. And then for the first time ever, we're going to do our annual investor summit on the sand in this beautiful country. You've been to the summit. I uh, imagine you're going to be at this one. Yeah, I don't think I have to travel that far for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the investor summit usually is a couple of days in a hotel, and then we get on a cruise ship for a week. And uh, just back to COVID, people just aren't ready to be on cruise ships, and we're not sure that we're even going to be sailing. So we decided uh, we would come here to a place we know, to a place that's got COVID pretty well under control. And uh, all that, of course, is subject to whatever may come we're here seeing the hotels open and we expect to have a trip but who knows right if the country gets closed down again we hope it doesn't we may have to postpone all of that but right now the plan is to uh be here for our discovery trip at the end of january and then the investor summit the 19th annual investor summit takes place in belize in june of 2021 you get all the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com david thanks so much for sharing your insight and your time with us today and we'll look forward to seeing you on the trip yeah thank you sir see you soon there's David Kafka. He runs the Remax in Placencia, Belize. So if you're looking for Belize property, whether to buy or to sell, you can get his contact information by getting his report. We'll tell you how to get that when we come back. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Real Estate Guys listeners, are you tired of losing real estate deals due to financing issues? Have you had enough of waiting on banks, lenders, and investor groups to fund new projects? What if there were a way to eliminate all the hassle and invest in real estate on your own terms? I'm here to tell you there is. Patrick Donahoe here from Paradigm Life. I'm an Investopedia top 100 most influential financial advisor, and I recently wrote a best-selling book about the financial strategy that changed my entire investment model, and the one that could change yours. To get a copy of my book for free and learn how you can maximize your real estate portfolio by acting as your own bank, send an email to mybank at realestateguysradio.com. Don't make another real estate deal without reading my book first. Email mybank at realestateguysradio.com now to get your copy for free. Don't be like Charlie, who scans the internet for IRA information, often getting bad information from copycats who have no idea what they're doing. You deserve to work with a reputable firm that specializes in one thing, the EQRP. Lucky for you, Congress just made it possible for you to get up to $200,000 out of your current 401k or TSP so you can invest that money in real estate or even your own business. Even if you're still working, it's possible to get access to all this money tax-free. Whether you're a full-time investor, a doctor, or a government employee, even if you have employees, the EQRP is your secret weapon. You'll never see this strategy in Money Magazine, only here with the Real Estate Guys. Every major accounting firm in America is quietly sharing this strategy with their wealthy clients, helping them get their funds freed from 401k jail. Hi, I'm Damian Lupo, and we have your solution. With the CARES Act expiring soon, the strategy will be gone forever. The EQRP company is ready to help you unleash your retirement funds now. Want to learn more about this strategy? Send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com for my special EQRP report today. Hi, this is Garrett Sutton, Rich Dad's advisor. Remember, equity happens, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. This week from Ambergris Key, Belize. Oh, my goodness. Great to hear about what's going on and spending some time with our friend David Kafka. Well, you know, that's really the secret. I think we talk about this, and whether you're investing out of town, out of state, or out of country, uh, we're not off world yet, but you got to have great boots on the ground. You got to have people in the market that eat, breathe, live, and they, they have their thumb on the pulse of what's going on. And, you know, fortunately, this isn't a gigantic market. Uh, and then there's a few key sub markets that really you pay attention to. So it's not a lot to keep a track of. Uh, but you got to have those relationships. So obviously, David has become a good friend of ours. He's a correspondent with the show, regular contributor. Um, we have him in our resource network. So you know, if people are interested in learning more about Belize from David, they can contact him there. But the point is, you got to have people that are that that are there. One of the very first things we did when we got to Belize is we started building relationships. And candidly.
recently. You know, we kissed a few frogs and some of them had warts and it didn't go so well. <laughs> but uh, but over time, if you're persistent, uh, you, you end up finding good people. And so we feel very fortunate. We've gotten to know David. David's good people. He stays on top of the market. Obviously, he's an expat. He understands what it's like to make the move. Uh, and he understands what it's like to live in a new country, kind of a stranger in a strange land, but now it's home for him. And I think that, you know, whether you're looking for a, a kind of a plan B or whether you're looking for a second home or retirement home or whether you're just looking for a good investment or a combination, right? Because you can get properties or a collection of properties that provide all those functions. You got to have the right people in the marketplace to help you. And the best way to build a team in a market is to find the one guy or gal that can help you meet everybody else you need to know. And uh, and so we've, we've been very fortunate in developing our relationships in Belize over the years that uh, we have a pretty strong boots on the ground team. I, I would say we probably know that market better than anybody else on the planet. You know, as David mentioned, our motto, education for effective action, he's kind of adopted that uh, philosophy. But what we love to do with the real estate guys is collapse timeframes, something that took us 15 years to learn. We can literally show you in four days. That's what our Belize discovery trip is. We've done field trips in lots of markets that we've spent years in cultivating those relationships, learning property managers, lenders, wholesale providers, turnkey operators, developers. And when we can introduce people in a short period of time, it's not about selling a property and a real estate guy's trip. You will never be sold a property. What you learn is the market and it's been a while since we've talked about this, but our general philosophy is you start as a real estate investor with your personal investment philosophy, who you are as an investor. Once you figured that out, why are you doing this? What are you after? What's the end game look like? And you get clear, then you find a market or markets that will help deliver the kind of result you want. Once you do that, you need to find a team, people to help you, brokers and lenders and inspectors and all those folks, attorneys, closing agents. Once you've got that figured out, well, now you go find a property. And really, our market trips where we go into markets are designed to show you that market part and introduce you to potential team members. Maybe they're the actual people you would use, or at least it gives you an idea of the caliber of folks you're looking for. So there was a time when we were doing a field trip every month at a different location, and that was a ton of fun. Uh, today, a lot of less travel and so forth, but uh, we're excited to put the Belize Discovery Trip back on the calendar uh, in January. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we don't do the domestic trips anymore. Not that we don't love them. They're great. And we love meeting our listeners and learning about new markets. Uh, and whether you're interested in Belize or not, to be candid, if you just want to spend four days with Robert and have him show you what you look for when you go into a market, any market, uh, you have to understand the drivers. You have to see it with your own eyes and kind of feel what the market is like, see the people, the demographics. Obviously, this is primarily a resort market. It, there's other opportunities developing, which maybe weren't as big 15 years ago. But the point is, is that process that you go through of how do you learn a market? What do you look for? How do you talk about it? And if you're going to go to all that work, I mean, as much fun as those buses were driving around in Dallas and Memphis and Atlanta and uh, Phoenix and Las Vegas and all the different places we did trips cruising around in your shorts on turquoise blue water sipping on beers and, and and mai tais and talking real estate in a small group because it's not like a 60 person bus we can't fit that many people i think at the most it's 10 or 15 at the most right can fit in one boat because if you get separated you can't see and you get around instead of you know getting around i mean there are golf carts and cars and stuff but it's really not the way you think of a real estate market you're getting around primarily on on boat which is a, a lot of fun uh, and you get to see some really beautiful resort properties. And so, you know, you can understand maybe some of the argument resort has certainly been hit in some ways. And you can look at that two different ways. You can say, gee, resort is dead. Hospitality is dead. It's never going to come back. I remember after the financial crisis, one of the first areas that died was hotels. Yep. Hotel funding dropped like by 95%. It was a train wreck. And of course, then hotels turned out to be one of the hottest sectors in a few years. People that understood the cycle understood the opportunity. And I think there could be some of that right now um, because you definitely have a change in pattern. If you think the world is going to be in lockdown forever, well, yeah, you're going to change your investment philosophy. You're going to change your behavior. If you think this is temporary, even a year or two temporary or shorter, then, then there's potentially some opportunity. So if you're not averse to travel uh, and if you're going to take the risk of traveling, why not go someplace epic? 
and have a, a mini tropical vacation with a guided tour. Spend time with Robert. Learn the market. You may or may not like it, but you'll learn something about Robert. You'll learn something. You'll meet some other cool people. You'll have a really, really good time. And you'll learn something about uh, market due diligence. And if you really, really like it, then you can come back for our Investor Summit because we're going to do it. We can't do it on a cruise ship. Last year, This year in 2020, we had to do it uh, on, on the screen. We called it our Investor Summit on screen, which was good. Uh, but by compared to how great it is when we get on the cruise ship, it sucked. Okay, it was good, but but by contrast, it sucked. Now we can't go back on a cruise ship, or maybe we could by the middle of next year, but we don't want to take a chance. So we're going to do it at a resort property in Belize. It's absolutely beautiful. It's one of the premier properties, if not the premier property in Belize. You get a chance to see it, and Robert knows quite a bit about it. It's going to be great. We've already got Kenny McElroy. Uh, confirmed. Peter Schiff is confirmed. Uh, we're working on some other great people. The difference is we're not on a big, beautiful cruise ship. So we don't have, you know, thousands of capacity. The meeting room holds only 210, which is just a tad smaller than what we had, you know, in our great conference centers on the cruise ship. It's actually going to end up being a smaller summit. So it means spaces are rare. So if you think it's something you're interested in, uh, you probably want to go to the Real Estate Guys website at realestateguysradio.com, click on the button that says Summit, and learn all about it and decide if you want to come. But if you want a sneak preview, then come on the Belize Field Trip at the end of January. You can find out about all our events if you go to realestateguysradio.com under events. Hey, David Kafka's got a pretty cool report that he did that really isn't about investing in Belize, but it's about the cost of living. One of the things people wonder when they come to visit on vacation or if they're thinking about spending a couple of months sabbatical or even retiring in Belize is what's it going to cost me to live? So David has meticulously gone through the different districts in Belize and calculated that for you. It's kind of a fun report. To get your copy of that report, all you have to do is send an email to col. Belize, like cost of living, Belize, C-O-L, Belize, at realestateguysradio.com, and you get the report. You also get a chance to meet David if you come on the Belize Discovery Trip or join us for the 19th Annual Investor Summit. Hey, big thanks to David Kafka for sharing his perspective. It's been great to learn what was happening while we were gone, and I uh, can't wait to get back to this beautiful place. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at BeYourBank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers. Low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct. Asset protection strategies for real estate investors. From attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.